The basis for our sermon this morning is taken from the book of St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty terrible with directions. The simpler the directions are, the better. And if somebody starts to give me a laundry list of directions, my brain shuts down, my eyes glaze over because I can't imagine what they're actually telling me in that moment. I grew up in the age of GPS and perhaps that's why I'm so terrible with directions and so it's important for me to make sure that I always know where I'm going. Now I can put my directions into my phone, I can trust in Google to get me to where I'm going, but I've already had it happen multiple times where the maps aren't updated or there's two roads with the same address or same name nearby or I just lose cell signal and I lose my way. It's important as we travel not to get lost. And so for me and for many, it's important to ask this question of people, do you know the way? Could you tell me how to get there? As we think about our life, our life is really a journey towards a final destination. And we want that final destination to be heaven. And so we need to be asking ourselves, what is the way to get to heaven? What are the directions for us to come to that awesome place? And today in our sermon, we're going to answer that question that everyone needs to be able to answer. Do you know the way? Do you know the way to heaven? In our text for today, we find Jesus with his disciples on Maundy Thursday, the night before he died. And on that night, Jesus was giving his disciples directions. He was preparing them for the time that he would no longer be in the world with them. He would be ascending to his father after his resurrection appearances to them to prove that he had risen and is truly alive forever. And so once he rose and ascended into heaven, they would no longer be with him physically as they had been in the past. When Jesus told them these things, their hearts were extremely troubled. That night, they had so many different things happening, so many emotions and thoughts swirling around in their mind. And so Jesus gave them very simple directions. An easy way to know the way to heaven itself. This is what Jesus said. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Seen him. Jesus lays it right out there. He says, I'm going to heaven. I'm, I'm preparing a place for you. And you do know the way to the place where I am going but on that night, on that night, this wasn't enough for his disciples because their hearts were filled with fear. Their fear was clouding their thoughts and they weren't able to grasp on to those promises that they had already learned and been taught by Jesus. They had watched him preach, they had watched him teach, they had watched him heal people, they had seen the power of his word, not only to heal people's lives, but to save people's souls. But on this night when Jesus was telling them so many troubling bits of information, they just couldn't see that truth that had always been clearly before them. If you and I were in that room that night, would we be any different? I mean, just put yourself in the disciples' shoes. Imagine that you have a best friend who tells you that they're going to move away. They're going to move far away. 
What would your initial reaction be? It'd be one of shock, it'd be one of surprise. And then you'd say the same thing that Thomas did. Well, could you tell me where you're going? Could you tell me how to get there? Could you tell me the way so I can come and visit? And so often in life, we are like that when it comes to the promises of our Savior Jesus too. Now we live in the age when Jesus has ascended and he is ruling all things before he comes back on judgment day to deliver his people and to judge all. And so we too have to be in this world without his physical presence. And when we go through times of trial, times of pain, isn't our vision of faith clouded as well? Don't we all too quickly forget those promises of our God? What is it right now, this week in your life, that is causing you the most upset? Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. That word is a picture, think of like the tossing sea. The waves going up and down, that's what the disciples' hearts were like. Well, what is it in life right now that causes that for you? I'm sure there's many different things for all of us that right now bothers us most, that stresses and worries us. But in these times when we so quickly lose our mind, in in the times when we so quickly and easily see the pain and we don't see the power and promises of our Savior Jesus, Jesus comes to us with patience and love just as he did with the disciples. And he tells us, You know where I am. You know how to get to me. You've known all along, I am the way. Because oftentimes in life, when we go through pain, we think to ourselves that Jesus, that God is far removed from us. Or that he has left us, he has abandoned us out in the middle of nowhere and we have no directions. He's just left us high and dry. But Jesus again says no. That's not the case. You know me. I know you. I am the way and the truth and the life. The biggest issues that you've had to handle in life, that of your sin and death and Satan, I've already taken care of because you know what? I chose to go the way of suffering. I chose to go the way of damnation and take all of your sins on myself. Every bit of you I paid for on the cross. I am the God who poured out his blood for you. I am not just a way. I don't just tell you how you can get your way to heaven. No, I am the way. I am preparing a place for you. And I'm coming back for you. You don't have to struggle and strive to get yourself to heaven. You don't have to struggle and strive to get yourself into my family. No, I have already given you a home because I am the way. And isn't that what so many people are looking for all throughout this life? We're looking for home. We're looking for a place that's secure and safe. Some place we can go to find rest. Some place we can go to find healing. But for all of us who trust in Christ, we don't see this life as our home. No, we look ahead to the home of heaven that's waiting for us. And we look ahead with expectancy and with eagerness, just longing for the day when finally... Finally, we can rest once and for all. But even now in this world, as we wait for that heavenly home that is prepared for us, Jesus comforts us to let us know that he is with us even now. He is carrying us along the way, all the way to our heavenly home with him. And he says to us, I also am the truth. So many people are looking for truth in this world. What is truth? It seems as if truth can be bought and sold at times to the highest bidder. Everybody has their idea of what the truth is, and everybody thinks that they have a corner on it. But what does Jesus, our Savior, say to us? He says, I am the truth. Whatever it is that is being sold to you in this world, look away from it and look to me. I tell you this truth 
that I love you more than anything in all the world, that I was willing to come into this world and live and suffer and die for you and then rise to give you a resurrection one day. That is the truth. I am the truth. Listen to me. And then he says to us, I am the life. Everyone is looking for satisfaction and contentment in this life. And so many people look in so many different places. And we ourselves too, we ourselves have looked in so many places in this life to find lasting contentment and peace. But again, Jesus comes to us in times of doubt, in times of pain, and he says, look to me. Because I am the life. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the source of all life. And I am the source of your life. I took you at the waters of baptism and I breathed my life into you. I poured out the Holy Spirit on you and have raised your dead heart to life. I have brought you into my family and given you a life like no other. A life characterized by all of the spiritual blessings that I have won for you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Because I am the way. The only way. I am the truth. The only absolute truth. And I am the life. The only life. And I will bring you to that home that I have prepared for you. We find tremendous comfort in these words. But it's interesting to note then, as we know Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, and so do the disciples, just look at how Philip responded. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. In order for us to understand what Jesus is saying here, we need to look at verses 10 and 11. When he says this, The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. In this section, Jesus is equating his works with the Father's works with Jesus' words. And so when Jesus is saying, believe on the evidence of the works themselves, he's saying, believe in the evidence of my ministry where I preach to people and I save their souls. Just look at every single one of those people that you have seen, my disciples, as you followed after me and see how I've rescued their souls from sin and death and Satan and hell. And I've given them so much more. I've given them the promise of eternal life. And that is what they have. Yes, Jesus' words are the Father's works. And Jesus is telling Philip here, Philip, what I want you to do right now is to believe in me. Don't just believe in me because of what I'm saying right now, but believe in all of the words that I've shared to you over my entire ministry. That's what will convince Philip that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is the thing that continues to convince us each and every day. Because aren't we again now like Philip? Philip was saying to Jesus, if you just show me the Father... Let me see him with my own eyes. Let me experience this awesome miracle. And then, and then I will believe. We often can do the same things in our pain or when we're struggling or when we're doubting. We say, God, if you could just show yourself to me, if I could just see the awesome displays of your power, if I could just have you right now step down out of the heavens and say, here I am, then I would believe in you and I would never doubt again. Except, except all throughout Scripture, God's raw power and His display of His glory and majesty never made supermen and superwomen out of believers so that they never doubted. Not a single believer in Scripture saw 
the power of God, and for the rest of their lives, never once doubted or struggled or strayed or wavered in their faith. Jesus appeared to Peter, James, and John on the mountain. He was transfigured before them, and yet on the night before he died, they would leave him all alone, and Peter would deny him. God appeared to Moses, and he appeared to Abraham, and yet we know of their lives as well, they weren't perfect, but they wavered and struggled just like us. As you look throughout Scripture, the one thing that supports believers in this world as we wait to be taken to our heavenly home, the one thing that supports us is the word of our God, is his word of truth that he gives to sanctify, cleanse, and save our hearts. And so each and every day we need to be reminded once again of this promise that a God has given to us. In the pain and the doubt, hear these words of your Savior. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And so as the disciples knew the way Do you, do I know the way? Do we know the way to heaven? We do. It's in Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And we know through the faith that he has given us that he is the one that can bring peace to our troubled souls. There's one last thing that we need to see in this text, though, in the last verse for today, verse 12, where Jesus says this, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Now remember what Jesus is meaning by his works in this section. He's saying his works are his words. How do we do works greater than Jesus? How do we do something that's greater than the three-year ministry that he had in this world? We do greater things than those as we have more and more opportunities to spread that same word to the world. Because that is the work of God. That is the true miracle. Oftentimes we think of Jesus' miracles where he he made more food or he healed people of demons or sicknesses or even raised the physical dead as if that was his greatest work. No, the greatest miracle of all is conversion. Where Jesus took dead hearts and raised them to new life. Where he delivered souls from the bondage of sin into the freedom of the good news of forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And so as you have the opportunity in life, as I have the opportunity with people around us, we do greater things than Jesus by speaking his word to others, by sharing his word of peace with them. And as we look at the end of that verse too, he says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. They will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Jesus was raised to the right hand of of God to rule all things in his church for your good and for mine. But as he does that, now that he has ascended into heaven, he is actually speaking through you and me. We are the mouthpieces of Jesus in the world, to bring peace to those who are hurting, to bring forgiveness to those who are troubled by their sin, to bring the good news of heaven to those who wonder how they could possibly get there. What a tremendous blessing and opportunity and privilege that we have to share the same message that Jesus shared with his disciples that night, to share the same message that brings us so much peace. Just stop and think for a second. People are looking for the truth. They look for it high and low. They look for it anywhere and everywhere. People are looking for life. They're looking for a life of satisfaction. They're looking for a life of contentment, but so often they're looking in all the wrong places and they're looking for the way. They're looking for the way to heaven, but so often they're focusing on all the wrong things, on themselves and what they have to do and how hard they have to try. But you have the good news. You know who the way, the truth, and the life is. Do you know the way? Yes, it is our Savior Jesus. 
And he gives us very simple directions. He doesn't give a laundry list of things to do. He doesn't say, just live like I did and then maybe you can get into heaven. He doesn't say, just try really hard. No, he says that he has prepared a place for us and he is coming to take us back home. One last picture for us to consider as we think about our text for today. It's this. We all are looking for that home, like I had said before. We are looking to get to our destination without getting lost. But in the beginning, we had a home. We had a home with our Heavenly Father. We had a home with our triune God. And yet we chose to run away. Adam and Eve took from that fruit of the tree and and they ran away from their father's house. But he never stopped wanting them. And he never stopped searching for them. And he never stopped desiring them. And so when his children ran away, when all of us had been lost, what did our father do? He sent his eldest son, our brother, into the world to come and find us, to seek us and save us, to bring us back into the family, to bring us back into the safety of his home. And that's what Jesus has done for us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Trust in God. Trust in Him. Amen.